Yes, family, blessed love. Give thanks for your presence. Give thanks for the life giver and the keeper of life. Emperor Haile Selassie I, a wonderful, blessed day to each and every one. This specific video will be premiered live. So we will be just given a few moments for those who would be coming in on the live streaming of it. Of course, I am sure that many, many ones will be watching it after it has been broadcasted and um, officially um, saved. So you also would be viewing this on another level. Give thanks for your presence. Uh, but as I said, for those who will be seeing it on the premiere, uh, we are just giving it a few moments for most people to come in as we always do. And as I said, um, or as you would have seen, I want to highlight a, a speech given by the, uh, the head of the Reparation Commission, specifically uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Hilary Beckles, and he will be speaking of the whole aspect of our nutrition as far as Afro-Caribbean people specifically, I'm just using the terminology that ones utilize, and he's actually going to be making a distinction between people in the Caribbean of African descent if you prefer that way, um, um, from even people on the continent and even from um, Caucasian. So I'm going to be going into that in a few moments. A very interesting um, put down from the professor, Dr. Hilary Beckles, and I'm sure you will find it quite interesting. And uh, of course, you know, we're definitely highlighting our Rastafari Experience Antigua Spring Equinox for 2022. In fact, at the end of this broadcast, I will give you um, some more information on that. But uh, what I can tell you now that the, the whole virtual experience is definitely on. So those of you who will not be able to come and join us, and I know a lot of you, won't be able to come and join us because, as I said before, they're still keeping up with the stipulation as it relates to not being able to enter the country unless you are fully vaccinated. We were hoping that that policy would have come to an end. Um, that was the impression we were somewhat getting, although the authorities did say they are still watching the, the, um, the, um, the, how things are going with the pandemic and all of that. And apparently the authorities in the medical um, aspect of it um, suggested to them that it would not be wise as yet to bring people into the country from other places that are not fully vaccinated. But the nationals of the country can now come uh, return home if even if they're not vaccinated, you know, a few weeks ago, even if you were a, a national of this country and you were not vaccinated and you are somewhere else in the world, you couldn't come back here. A very interesting thing, you know, I am surprised nothing big came out of that straight up. But anyway, so we are highlighting the virtual aspect family. That means all you have to do is to, to sit at home and watch the whole event. Remember, this is several days. Eh? We're talking about the double hike to Green Castle Hill. So, I mean, I know many of you, you know, for sure would have heard us speak of the mighty megaliths that align with the stars. And of course, the spiritual vibration you get just to be around them. Well, of course, you, you, you may not be able to come, but the next best thing is to sit at home to sit on your computer, laptop, or your big screen, big screen, pardon me, um, smart television, 
and, and climb up Green Castle Hill with us, meditate on the top of Mount Anu with us. And of course, the whole vibration will be up full. But as I said, I'll be giving you some more information about that at the ceiling of the program. Um, if you're not here at that time, you know what to do, just contact us. Definitely, you see all the information there. You definitely can email us, priestisaacinstitute at gmail.com. Ask us about the virtual ticket, you know, definitely, and you will definitely receive uh, uh, your, your receipt to show that you have received your virtual ticket. And of course, your link to join us on those days. We're going to have the cannabis tour as well when we go amongst the ganja and you see how we are doing the production here, right here in Wadadli, in Antigua, amongst Rastafari. We do it every year. So we have the cannabis tour and of course the, the chalice talk. You want to be a part of that as well. And again, the double hike. And remember, we're going to have a special yoga wellness retreat. Eh? This is going to be a mighty session. This alone is by itself a, a whole day session that is going to be a part of the, the whole Equinox experience. This one will be hosted by the Honorable Empress Naya, specifically um, yoga practitioner and yogi uh, 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 meditation expert certified within her field. And she'll be having um, some guests with her throughout the day as it relates to that whole retreat and workshop and wellness, you know, affair that uh, she specifically will be hosting. So you definitely need to contact us to get some more information. The whole event, um, the whole Equinox uh, virtual experience will be very inexpensive. It's only $100. And, and added with the yoga retreat, only $150, $150 package definitely will give you the full, full, full experience as it relates to the Rastafara experience Antigua Spring Equinox. But as I said, as we are sealing up, I would give you a bit more information as it relates to that. But as I said, we are definitely going to touch upon the good brother, the vice chancellor, if I'm not mistaken, of the uh, um, University of the West Indies. We are talking about Dr. Hillary Beckles. I hope I got that title correct. Eh? If not, please forgive me. But for sure, Professor Sir Hillary Beckles, not titles, boy, Sir Hillary Beckles. And of course, um, the, the, the head as such of the the reparation, official reparation commission. And um, he'll be speaking here about, this says Caribbean reality, but he's connecting it to our diet, how we eat. And um, I want us to take a bit of this in. All right, should be ready to flow by now. To build themselves into the most powerful nation on earth, they have left the Caribbean peoples illiterate and unhealthy which means that the governments today now have to clean up illiteracy and clean up the ill health, do not have the resources to do it. I like to use Jamaica as an example. After 300 years, the British left Jamaica with 80% of its people illiterate. When Jamaica went into independence, when Jamaica went into independence in 1962, 80% of the people were functionally illiterate. And then you say to Jamaica, with their two million people, go and develop. There is no nation on this planet using any method of economic development that could transform a society with 80% illiteracy into a developed nation in 50 years. It is impossible. Because from the illiteracy springs a whole range of other conditions. From the illiteracy springs a whole range of other conditions that undermine the best thrust for development. You have to deal first with removing illiteracy. Then you have to move to deal with health because health and illiteracy are linked. We now have in the Caribbean an explosion of chronic diseases. We have 60% of the black people in the Caribbean over the age of 60 have hypertension or diabetes or both. Now, if you take 
the single criterion of chronic diseases. Hypertension, high blood pressure disease, type 2 diabetes. If you take that simple criterion, the black people in the Caribbean are the unhealthiest people on the planet. And you have to understand that. On the one hand, we are watching Usain Bolt and we are watching the Caribbean athletes. We are watching the Caribbean with an image of being the most athletic people on the planet. But beneath that image of these super sportsmen and women is the hard reality that we are now the sickest people on the planet. In every black family in the Caribbean, hypertension and diabetes is endemic and congenital. In my family, almost everybody over 60 has hypertension and diabetes. And it's the same for your families, for all of our families. There is an explosion of ill health in the Caribbean. And this is a legacy of slavery and colonization. You take, you take a people, put them on an island for 300 years, give them salt fish and salt pork every day, overwork them, undermine them, sell their children, rape their wives, make them work 20 hours a day, overwork, malnourish, and take them through that stress, that stress profile of physical and mental terror, what you get? Hypertension and diabetes. It was the same then as it is now. When your doctor tells you to learn to relax, to learn to relax, take out your salt. Well, you can take out the salt, but your four parents couldn't take it because that's all they had, salt. And now the result is that black people in the Caribbean cannot metabolize salt and sugar. Because for 300 years, that is what we were fed on plantations, plus the stress. So we cannot metabolize salt and sugar, and now we all have a salt and sugar problem, hypertension, diabetes. And we are spending millions of dollars to deal with this. Millions of dollars we are spending to fight hypertension and diabetes in the Caribbean that is going to be the number one economic crisis in this region in the next 20 years unless we find an answer to it. At the University of the West Indies, we've started to do this research. And I can share with you the problem that we're having. The drugs that are being used to treat high blood pressure, for example, have been clinically tried on Caucasian peoples because they are the majority in the markets. The drugs are 95% efficient on a Caucasian body because when you take a hypertension drug, what happens, the drug goes into your body. It sends a message to your cells to open up, to open up, let the blood come through. It sends a message, okay. When a white person takes that drug, the cells have a 90% response. Hold on, hold on. I just want to make sure the family listening you get what the king's saying here. In fact, I'm gonna pull that back a bit, you know. Because let me let me let me I know some people just coming in too. Some people maybe just coming in and as I said, we're listening to um Sir Hilary Beckles here, and he's speaking about the poor health of the people in the Caribbean. He's more highlighting as a Caribbean man, he's speaking about the people in the Caribbean, and now he's going into the levels where you know, there's this comparison being made, really, with uh, the the uh, the testing of these, I guess, drugs or medicines on different types of people. But I want you to listen to it. I, I I pull it back just a bit, especially for those who may be just coming in. You know, in fact, let me just touch it a little more for those who may be just coming in to to garner exactly what the the brother is saying here. Plus the stress, so we cannot metabolize salt and sugar. And now we all have a salt and sugar problem, hypertension, diabetes. And we are spending millions of dollars to deal with this. Millions of dollars we are spending to fight hypertension. This is what he's saying, good. Caribbean, that is going to be the number one economic crisis in this region in the next 20 years, unless we find an answer to it. At the University of the West Indies, we've started to do this research. And I can share with you the problem that we're having. The drugs that are being used to treat high blood pressure, for example, have been clinically tried on Caucasian peoples because they are the majority in the markets. 
The drugs are 95% efficient on the Caucasian body because when you take a hypertension drug, what happens, the drug goes into your body. It sends a message to your cells to open up, to open up, let the blood come through. It sends a message, okay. When a white person takes that drug, the cells have a 90% response. When an African black person in the Caribbean takes that drug, we have a 70% response. So we are still dying at a faster rate. When you see people in the 60s and 70s having strokes and heart attacks because of hypertension, it is because the drugs are not working. They're not working as well as they should. Now, the important thing about this is that the drugs work on the Africans. Hear that now? The drugs work on the Africans as hear, well hear, as they work on the Caucasians. Hear, hear the point. This is what I was saying from the beginning. Listen to this point here that he's making here. Come again. The important thing about this is that the drugs work on the Africans. The drugs work on the Africans as well as they work on the Caucasians. But they don't work on us because something happened to us. You see, so when an African in Nigeria and Ghana and so on takes the drugs, he has, she has a good response. When the European take it, they have a good response. But in the Caribbean and in the New World, the Africans over here don't have that response because something happened to us. You get that because part. Because we have been genetically modified during that slavery period. Listen, listen to this, listen. It doesn't work on us. And now we have to find out. So right now we are taking, we are taking blood samples. We are taking blood samples from people in Nigeria and Ghana and comparing blood samples with Barbados, Jamaica, St. Vincent, and trying to find out what the differences are that. so that we can figure out why the cells of black people in the Caribbean don't respond the same way to, as Africans do. What hmm. has happened to us in the process? So, 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 so what do you think about that? What, what, what do you think has happened? You know, even before I continue to run what he's saying, what, what do you think has happened that his, his um, clinical research there what he's saying there is that, um, okay, he clearly mentioned, you know, that the test was done on, on um, uh, let's just put it this way, you know, and it's not the insult anyone, you know, but when you do tests on mice and then bring it to human beings, you know, you don't expect a man, a human being is not a mice uh, or a mouse really. And what was being highlighted here, I would say, is that the, the, the brother is showing you that I mean, even in the case of certain drugs, the test is done on Caucasians. And I think we know by now that, I mean, I know a lot of us would just like to say, you know, everybody is the same. And then you may even take a discussion, a medical discussion. Eh? Some people will take a medical discussion as being racist. When you see the brothers just, or uh, whoever would be speaking something of the truth. When they speak about, for example, um, um, lactose um, intolerance, and and you know that it's it is said that black people, the vast majority of black people, whether they know it or not, uh, are not naturally tolerant to to milk and cheese and a lot of them different things, you know. So that is something very important to look at. But now he's asking, what would have taken place? even from that time to this time where there's a difference with the Africans in comparison to that of the Africans in the Caribbean, because we, it is all Africans that we are talking about. You, you, you follow me? So let us see what he's saying here again. The stress profile of slavery for the three to 400 years. You, you hear that? All of that very important. So he wants to know what, what is making the difference now, why they're looking at, 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 at these you know, results and seeing the difference amongst people that are basically the same. All right. We are taking blood samples. We are taking blood samples from people in Nigeria and Ghana and comparing blood samples with Barbados, Jamaica, St. Vincent, and trying to find out what the differences are so that we can figure out why the cells of black people in the Caribbean don't respond the same way to, as Africans do. What has happened to us in the process? The stress profile of slavery for the three to 400 years. And believe me, we have lost some very good people in the Caribbean 
over the years from heart attacks as a result of hypertension. People who really should be living longer. But let's say there are five or six drugs that we are using for hypertension. We've tried them. We've had individuals in our university community and we have moved them from one drug, it worked for a year, to the next, it worked for a year, to the next. And we've gone through all the drugs, and eventually the body starts reacting, and we're getting people dying of heart attacks. That should be alive. So slavery was not just killing you in the slavery period. 150 years later, slavery is still killing us at a faster rate. And, and I must say, you know, and, and I understand what the doctor is saying, um, so here we better just say it. But of course, you know, most of us, you know, we can't, this consciousness can't be this half consciousness. And he just say he give them one drug and give them a next drug. Drugs will kill you too. Anything, whatever it is, whether it's legal drugs or illegal drugs, there's a reason why they call it drugs. Sometimes it's as if we, when the Rastaman tell you about the word sound, we mock it as if it's a joke or oh, semantics and this and that. This ain't no semantics. We ain't the one playing the semantic game. The enemy is giving you something that is supposed to be medicine and calling it drugs. Why call it drugs? Because you know exactly what it is and that's what it is, it's drugs. But we are so drugged out that we can tell people we're giving people drugs and, don't, and we don't find nothing wrong with saying that. We can say we're going to the pharmacy to get some drugs and we, we don't stop to think like, why am I going for drugs? Because it's legal. Try them. We've had individuals in our university community and we have moved them from one drug, it worked for a year, to the next, it worked for a year, to the next. And we've gone through all the drugs and eventually the body starts reacting and we're getting people dying of heart attacks. That should be alive. So slavery was not just killing you in the slavery period. 150 years later, slavery is still killing us at a faster rate. So when people say to you, slavery is over, it's in the past, you are now in the jet stream of it. Hear that, hear that, hear, that, are... hear that, hear that, hear that. So when people say slavery is over and it's past, he's saying, we are now in the jet stream of it. And I, if you know me, I totally agree with the statement. The statement of, you know, what he's saying. And I'm not, I, I'm just listening to the statement and what is being said. I'm not even judging no person's life. Just the statement and what is being said. And if you know we are in the jet stream of slavery, we must understand that this is a psychological war. Remember again, you know, we are the doctors that were graduated from the same people that has, have us in the jet stream of slavery. The medicine that we practice is concocted by the people that have us in the jet stream of slavery. The, you know, the educational system of which the good brother knows this. But, but to what degree do we know this or we don't really understand this? Because we, we, we would say this, you listen to me now, because remember I live it. We would say this, the educational system that we have inherited from our former slave master is not good enough. And I personally believe that we personally, definitely for sure, are responsible for re-educating ourselves. But anyway, the system that we live in and the educational system is not good enough. It, is, it doesn't reflect us. This is what we would say. It doesn't reflect us. It, it reflects the history of another. It, it, it's void of our culture and our history. Okay, we, we, want, we want the enslaver to give us this. Okay, fair enough. But yet still, we fail to realize that these same universities that of course were built on the back of slavery. Again, I'm sure, <laughs> not I'm sure. I know the brother knows this. This is Sir Hilary Pebbles. He understands this. He's, he's the, the head man really, or one of the chief individuals fighting for reparation in um, the official sense, accepted by, um, official though, 
Yeah, you have to check your words correctly. So he knows that they've been built on the back of slavery. Understand, but so 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 when when within the reparation package, we are given scholarships to go to these same universities to come out with degrees to be a doctor or a lawyer or whatever it is to to continue to build the jet stream of slavery. Don't we sit and think? This is my point. It's deeper than just on the surface. Much deeper. Anyway. We are now experiencing the medical consequences of it. Oh, yeah, and yeah. that is devastating our governments and our economies <laughs> and our families. Each time one of my great colleagues die of hypertension, heart attacks, I shudder. Because I know that had that person been white, they would be alive because the drugs would have worked better for them. But we do not have the resources to do this work. We have approached the pharmaceutical companies and they have said to us, the black people in the Caribbean Here are only 5% of the world's population. Here this research requires millions of research dollars to have the drugs adjusted through biochemical research so that when the black person from the Caribbean takes it, they get the same response as anybody else. I want to understand what you're saying. So when, when he approached the big man in the pharmaceutical world, the big man told me, listen, man, it's just a little bit of the item down there, no, man. Well, I, I don't think he said it like that. As, as uh, Sir Hilary Beckles said, the, the Afro-Caribbean population is only 5% of who we're dealing with. And it's going to take billions of dollars just to do the research. Do the research into what? Hypertension and, and heart disease? It'll take billions of dollars to do the research in that? Billions of dollars. That is to show you, you know, how what, what worth they give to those of us who are enlightened. Your grandmother can tell you what bush to use. The same grandmother to you. Know, I understand the same grandmother, the same grandmother that um, uh, 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 people like to say, my grandmother lived to be 99 and 100 and this, and she used to eat. The, the, the pig and she used to eat this and that yeah but the pig she would eat she know the pig name she raised the pig not that we can't do it eating pig but it's different than going to the store and buying the pork chop from the freezer it's a totally different thing but that same grandmother now she know the bush she know the bark of which tree to use and what time you know so so even though she may have gone down because of some of them same, what they call it, non-communicable diseases. Yet still, she prolonged her life till she understood nature. So yeah, she would have popped out at 90 and 95 because of that. But now they're going at 20 and 33 because of the same disease. Because they don't know the pig they were eating. <laughs> they never call the rooster by name. And rather worse, they never drink nothing bitter in their life. You see the difference? Okay. So, 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 so just imagine the same grandmother with that ancient African knowledge and, 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 you know, didn't persecute the pig. It would be a totally different level altogether. Because again, a lot of the soil food and all of that stuff did come down from off outside of the realms of the whole enslavement period, you know, upon a people. But taking away, what I'm taking away from what Sir Hilary Beckles is saying here, again, I understand the theme of what he said. But man, when we're looking against the system, you see, that's why man fighting for reparation. Nobody fighting for repatriation at all, eh? The repatriation thing gone, eh? <laughs> Boy, this is something else. You know, it's very, it's a very half conscious thing that we are now this semi-conscious bourgeois conscious and conscious a kind of how and conscious to a level and sip champagne conscious we got to be very serious and careful yes you got to be diplomatic of course we definitely got to be strategic of course but we have to know exactly what the psychological slavery is all about as the good brother here is saying the educational system well he's not saying it here 
but if you follow him, he knows, you know he knows the understanding that the educational system is definitely a great detriment to us, but the, the, the educational system is not just going to so-called schools, is everything that is the result thereof. The culture is the educational system, you know? Again, dealing with pharmaceutical drugs and hospital, that is all of that is an offshoot of the educational system because that is not our natural way of healing. Healing hypertension and diabetes for us doesn't need billions of dollars to research. Hear that, that's just researching. That's not even making no medicine. That's just looking into it. Billions of dollars. I wonder if anybody pocketing them billions of dollars when they, they put these money into researching these things. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, 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 you know, you know, that that's um a bit of what the the, the good professor Hillary Beckles is saying there as it relates to the whole aspect of the 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 health of the the black nation at least the afro-caribbean nation yes family i just said i would bring that one to to the item in a in a understanding specifically even on the level of uh but even in the light of what is known as african history month as well but of course, you know, again, let me just remind you that we are definitely streaming live Radio Anu, the international flavor, the universal spice. So make sure you definitely join us for what is known as the tiger's nest in the early. But I want to highlight Youth University. Youth University, that is every Monday, keeping in mind now that is every Monday at a 4 p.m. sharp on Radio Anu, and that's 4 p.m. Um, Eastern Caribbean time. Eh? I mean, at this time, that might be 4 p.m. I think it's 4 p.m. East, um, 3 p.m., pardon me, Eastern Standard Time at this time, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. At this time, I wonder if you got that. But really, I'm talking about um, Eastern Caribbean time. We're dealing with 4 p.m. So if you're Eastern Standard Time, yeah, we're talking about 3 p.m. You definitely come in and join the young ones, the Honorable uh, Princess Akesha Menin and the Honorable uh, Prince Ala Masse. Uh, bring the youths in and definitely have a wonderful sit down, you know, with the young ones as it relates to enough information and vibes. You know, they'll be talking about so many different things. They definitely highlight the key Swahili and the scientific corner every day. And of course, they always have something spicy to talk the children with you know all a part of the whole flow remember for sure we have what is known as the international homeschool classes remember we have the african history slash heritage classes we also have for you what is known as the biology classes as well you could definitely check us out uh of course you know visit the website to get more information which is priestisaacinstitute.com priestisaacinstitute.com and of course as i said the biology edition is also in motion as we speak the children are learning so much or so many things i should say you know the youths are learning about their you know circulatory system they're learning about the nervous system the youths are learning about the digestive system youths children three years old four years old learning exactly what is taking place when the food is going into their system children learning about the atom you know being able to correspond with you and exactly what they're learning about the the skull and the, the skeletal system and all of this stuff so family this is really something that is marvelous for the young ones marvelous for the children something they will full joy it has been designed to keep their attention to give them a bit of entertainment but the main thing is that when they're done with these classes family you as the parent yourself will be surprised the the level of information and knowledge that they retain you know so we definitely give thanks for all the young ones who have been you know, doing their works and of course you know we give out the worksheets and so many different things as i always say you know all you have to do is just contact us and, and, and let us know you'd like to 
you know, see a, a, a viewing of um, the class, give us a, a free preview of the class, and that's not a problem at all at all. Eh? So definitely, we give thanks for your presence with us. And of course, don't forget the Tiger's Nest, as I said, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday evening. This evening, of course, is no exception. Definitely 7 p.m. sharp, Eastern Caribbean time. Uh, um, this says Eastern Standard Time, but Eastern Standard Time at this time would be about 6, 6 p.m. So definitely, that's why we keep the, the, the Eastern Caribbean time, eh? You know, because that ain't changing and hopping here and hopping there. It's just standard. <laughs> and of course, remember Rastafari Experience Antigua Spring Equinox. Of course, for many of you, it's going to be the virtual edition. So contact us today and make sure you reserve your spot so you could be with us on the double hike, so you could be with us on the cannabis tour, so you could be with us for the yoga retreat, so you could be with us for the full experience. Very inexpensive, only a um, hundred dollars family for the for the full experience or 150 for the experience plus the full retreat i mean that's a very 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 good package for what you'll be getting proper proper streaming you know proper live quality streaming and everything i mean it's just up to you to have a proper device to really take it in all right is there anything else to say at least i have so many things to say you know but let me just let you go oh remember as well family for all of you who um uh desire to contribute now this is a different level for all of you who desire to contribute to the essay competition definitely now is the time to do so and remember um uh, I, I know maybe ones may want to to purchase a laptop or a tablet for the children that are doing the essay competition but because the time is so close now it would be better remember the cash app and the paypal information is in the description below the video so you can go below the video and you can click on the cash app you could click on the paypal or you could email us with your information and 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 you know and tell us exactly what you'd like to contribute to the essay competition those of you who already received the letter and the budget and if you have not and you want to read the letter properly. I mean, family, you have to take this serious. You know, as I said, this is not no money making affair. This is the ninth year we've been doing this essay competition. I wish we would have had it internationally this year, but again, enough of the item didn't come up to show support for it. As I said, this is no personal thing. This is something that we have orchestrated. It is, it is an institution, not the priest isaac's institute you know the essay competition is an institution by itself and this is its ninth year it has proven itself every year and what it does it it rewards children for seeking out their afrocentricity to me if i did not um create it i would support it every year i'm shocked that more people don't support it to be very honest to be very very honest i to be very honest you mean to say you can't give $20, $10, $50, $100. You can't give $500 to children who are to encourage them to write an essay. This is not my homeschool program. Either. This is the essay competition I do every year. But anyway, this is not the program to explain that. I've already explained this thing extensively. And I'm, I must say, you know, I, I really, for those of us who are supposed to be so conscious, it's somewhat disappointing to see how we react. Everybody knows that I'm a trusted person. It's not as if we run in any scam here. Everybody know that this is a trusted organization you hear speaking to you all the time. You understand. Nine years I say we're doing this. Year. No human being can say, hey, I was promised a prize and we didn't get it. Nine years. And, and, and most of this is going to even the people of this nation too, of Antigua and Barbuda, you know, even officially, we have always advocated for this. This is not something we're supposed to ask nobody for no donation for. We have advocated for this to be a part of the national budget as it relates to the educational system. But I've read this before. I've explained this for those who are really interested. And from my perspective, too many people are not interested in the, the generation to come. 
You don't understand that is your own existence. You see, we've been so dumbed down that we don't understand that we live on in the next generation. We think the consciousness stops with us. But anyway, family, you thanks. As I said, the, the link for the Cash App and PayPal is in the description below. Give thanks, family. Give thanks for the love. Remember Youth University at 4, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And remember the Tiger's Nest at 7 p.m. Eastern Caribbean Time or, or 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All the love in the world, family, from the Tiger's Nest. Holy Emmanuel I, Selassie I, Ja Rastafari. Blessed love. Give thanks. <laughs>